Hi, folks. Welcome to Crisco's Corner. To all my subscribers and regular viewers, welcome back. To my new subscribers and new viewers, welcome. From the Washington Examiner, Trump's super PAC hoards cash with more on hand than RNC and DNC combined. Yeah. Yep. I do have to say, in all fairness, it does not list how much any D uh, DNC PACs have. But that's a huge amount of money. Or as President Trump would say, huge. It's huge. Former President Donald Trump's Save America PAC Political Action Committee has more cash on hand than the Republican National Committee and the Democratic National Committee combined. Federal Election Commission filing show. The former president's political action committee reported $110 million plus of cash on hand compared to almost $53 million for the DNC and $45.5 million for the RNC. Save America reported few expenses while donations continue to pour in, according to the February FEC filings. The party committees, in contrast, have transferred millions to affiliated groups. Yeah, they have uh, mostly probably to congressional candidates. I'm sure some Senate candidates, but mostly congressional. Because that's where the real war is. But I think that's a war that the Democrats are going to lose. I don't know if they can even keep the 50-50 in the Senate. We'll have to see. God willing. See if America's disper disbursement receipts show that the PAC spent only about $1.2 in February. Well, the RNC spent $22.5 million, the DNC $21.1 million. It's about the same. Yeah, he's hoarding cash. Why is he hoarding cash? Hmm, let me see. He's going to use that, of course, in the close congressional districts. Now, here's the thing. This money is going to be used to support America First Republicans. Not the old school rhinos. And in fact, there's primaries all over the place. There's two fundamental shifts in both the major parties. In the last few years, as we saw, the Democrats have gone so far progressive left, left that the Overton window is, it makes a moderate independent look far right. And that's the truth, whether Democrats want to admit it or not. It puts guys like Joe Manchin and millions of other Democrats that are the old school union of blue, white, blue collar workers in a spot. They're still members of the Democrat Party, but the Democrat Party doesn't think they're members anymore. Oh, they care about their votes at election time, but other than that, they could give two craps. And it's been a huge shift. And that's already happened already. In the Republican Party, it goes much slower, at least in this case, that the old neocon rhinos, like, well, we use a classic example, Liz Cheney, Kinginser in Illinois, and guys like Mitt Romney, uh, John McCain, rest his soul, even though I had a lot of respect for the man, he was one. And we can go through the whole list. Slow, they're getting weeded out of the party. Uh, by Trump's pushing and the America First agenda. Now, people are saying that's not healthy for the party. Absolutely is healthy for the party because as far left as the Democrats have gone, if the Republicans don't change, instead of saying, you know, the way it's coming down right now is the Democrats are the party of really, really bad ideas and the Republicans are a party of no ideas. Their Their main mantra is, you know, we're not the greatest in the world, but look how bad the Democrats suck. Well, that only goes so far. His PAC's aggressive savings may indicate that he's gearing up for another presidential run. While Trump has not yet committed to running for a second non-consecutive term in 2024, he has implied that becoming the 47th as well as the 45th is on his agenda. In January, a video circulated on social media showing Trump during a game of golf Quipping that he might be the next president. Yeah, I saw that. It was kind of cute. It was tongue-in-cheek. 
Trump still polls well among Republican voters and has been competitive with President Joe Biden in surveys testing a hypothetical rematch. Yeah, I think those those so-called surveys, I think Trump does a lot better in those. I think people are still afraid to say anything, uh, especially if they support Trump. It's uh, amazing to me how Biden even still has, what is it, a f- he's only down by five or six points in a lot of the polls. It's uh, very interesting. I'll tell you the truth, honestly. I think at this at this time, my opinion only, and I mean, not just mine, but millions of others, I think Trump is going to do it. But two things are going to have to happen, I think. It's going to have to be a very huge, as the president would say, huge, huge Republican win. But not just a huge Republican win. Getting the old rhino Republican neocons out and having them replaced with America first Republicans. Now, you're not going to get them all, and he knows that. But if you get a large chunk in this cycle in 2024, when the next congressional elections are up and he'll have, he'll have so much money banked. So will the RNC. It'll be a bloodbath. It'll be a bloodbath. I think then, and only then will Trump say yes. I think he's about 90% of the way now, but if he gets some of the, when I say some, I'm not sure on an exact number of congressional seats, my guess is right now, the Republicans are going to take over 43 seats. They're going to have a plus 43 net gain. They're going to lose some, they're going to gain some, and in the end, my guess is 43 seats. The Senate, that's going to be a little tougher. The Senate, I think they can get back Georgia. I think Herschel Walker can win, given the right circumstances, and there's many other Senate elections. My guess right now is 53-47 Republicans. Not much of an edge, but enough. And then there's the next cycle in 2024 when the third of the Senate is up, as we all know, and also all the House of Representatives and the presidential year. That's their turnout year. I've run in many elections in upstate New York. I used to be a local elected official as a Democrat back in the early 2000s, no longer Democrat, but that's besides the point. Off years have low numbers. Off years are normally better for centrist Republican candidates because of the low turnout. You can apply that with what you will, but that's just the reality. Now, this one's going to get a huge amount of publicity. Is it still going to be a low, lower turnout than, say, a presidential year? Well, of course. Because that's just the way people are. But I think Trump is in the driver's seat. Frankly, to hear him lately talking, I think he's smoothed out, especially with the mainstream media now. Some of his rallies, he might go off a little, little off script, but that's a rally. That's fine. You know, you expect that. But interviews and such, and he's very selective about what he says and, and what subject he talks about and who he talks to. This is his to lose, I think. I really, truly believe that. This is the Trumps and the Republicans' party. This is their election to lose. And the Republican Party, at least historically, has always shot themselves in the foot. I think this time it's going to be much different. Until next time, goodbye and good luck. (laughs) 